Hey everyone, Minutia Minute here, and it's Monday yet again. Time for another community shout out and comic book review. I've really been enjoying digging into your recommendations and checking out stuff that I probably otherwise would not have checked out. And today's book definitely falls into that category. But first, we have to talk about the person who put it on my radar, and that is Naman, the comic book worm. I know a lot of you guys out there in the comic book community know Naman already. He's an absolutely fantastic person to have in our little YouTube comic book community. He's always a positive force, leaving kind words, uploading fun videos, always chuckling, making jokes to himself. Uh, it's always great to see him tell a joke that he thinks is funny. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to watch on YouTube, actually. So if you aren't subscribed to a comic book worm, please go check him out. Uh, it's been so cool seeing his channel grow because it wasn't that long ago that he had like 50 subscribers and then it just took off in like a few weeks. He's gone from like 70 subs to very close to 200. If he hasn't cracked 200, I would imagine he probably will this week or next week at the latest. So swing over to his channel, get him above 200, sub him up, watch some of his videos, and check him out. Probably my two favorite shows that he uploads on a regular basis are uh, going through his original comic book collection because he was out of comics for 40 years probably and then got back into comics very recently. Uh, and it's cool to see that he still has all these old comics despite being completely disconnected from the hobby up to this point. Um, and so he goes through some of those books and what he thought of them and why he got them. Always really cool to hear those stories. And then the other one that I want to call out is his One and Done series where basically he has a, I don't know if it's a long box or a short box, that's just filled with number ones that he's picked up over the past number of months. Um, with the intent of just pulling one out at random, going through it in detail, looking at the quality of the copy that he picked up, but then also going over the story, going over the art, page by page, meticulously reviewing and deciding whether this is a book that he wants to continue reading or not. And the book that I read this week actually ties into his One and Done series because he just reviewed issue one of this for his One and Done in the last week or two. And uh, it's a book I've seen other people talking about, I've been curious about it, and then it kind of fell off my radar. And when Naman did a review of it, I was like, oh yeah, I wanted to check that out and read it. And so I gave it a read. The book that I'm talking about is the Beta Ray Bill miniseries from Marvel Comics. Um, first off, this is going to be another book where it's very much outside my wheelhouse. Anything Marvel, and especially Thor, probably one that I know the least about. Uh, I dabbled a little bit with Walt Simonson because I really like him as a creator, but didn't get very far into Thor. It's been on my list forever and I've never really done it. Um, so I really didn't know anything about Beta Ray Bill, in all honesty. When this book opens, um, there's an explanation that spends a fair amount of time explaining who Beta Ray Bill is, but then also going on and on about the King in Black storyline, which I was... I'm completely in the dark on other than what I've heard from you guys on YouTube and so I was like uh oh <laughs> it kind of gave me alarm bells we very quickly get away from the whole king and black element of the storyline and we just focus on Beta Ray Bill as this sort of tragic figure of Asgard now I felt like in Naman's review he was a little bit more ambiguous uh, about the quality of the art in this story. Um, I actually have to disagree with him on that. Um, I really like the art in this book. Um, some of the double page spreads are just absolutely epic. Um, I recently read Wonder Woman Dead Earth, which is also written and illustrated by Daniel Warren Johnson. And I think I did a review for it on the channel. I can't remember. It would have been late last year. Um, but the thing that I noticed was the way he captures kinetic energy. As a matter of fact, there's kind of a great example here. You just really feel motion and impact uh, when looking at his illustrations, and I, I really dig it. There's another great example of just this craggy old man in the foreground, uh, you know, wonderfully rendered, almost Ren and Stimpy-like in terms of the detail that 
Daniel Warren Johnson chooses to bring out in the expressions. It actually reminds me a lot of Ren and Stimpy, uh, the more I think about it. Um, but then in the background, you've got the ship that is hurtling into this wall, um, and you truly feel the weight and the impact of it. Um, I think it's really, really cool. I don't want to put words in Naman's mouth, but the impression that I get is he likes just a little bit more detail, a little bit more finesse. It's kind of like with me and Batgirls. Like, I've talked with some people that love the artwork in Batgirls, and for me, it's just a style choice that I just can't get on board with. I just don't like it. And uh, I think this is maybe a similar thing here where, you know, for me, this art really scratches an itch, uh, but for another comic book collector, it just isn't quite what he's looking for. So kind of interesting. As far as the story goes, basically um, Beta Ray Bill is trying to find a new weapon that can cure his looks because he used to have the hammer Stormbreaker and Thor destroyed it and whenever he wielded Stormbreaker, it would turn him into his former self, which is sort of this humanoid alien type thing. Something like that? <laughs> Did I mention I'm a layman uh, when it comes to Beta Ray Bill? The point is, um, he's trying to get his looks back, and so he decides to journey into this forbidden land and take on the creature that destroyed his homeworld and steal his enemy's sword uh, and basically use it as his new weapon. Uh, along the way, we have some great interactions with some characters that join him along his journey, and uh, there's a pretty poignant subplot that revolves around his ship, the Scuttlebutt, and the AI contained therein, which is personified in a robot when he travels to this sort of underworld type location. I really related to Beta Ray Bill, and I was really impressed not just with the artwork, but also with Daniel Warren Johnson's ability to make me invest in a character that I really didn't know anything about in a universe that I'm not super invested in. Uh, I found myself really appreciating what this character had to offer, and I can totally see why you know, he's a fan favorite for a lot of people, and why people were really excited for this miniseries to come out. So, uh, really glad I read Beta Ray Bill. This is my version of a one and done. In my case, it's a trade paperback, and lucky me, there's only one issue to be had because it is just a miniseries. I would definitely check it out. If you aren't subscribed to Namen already, I think a lot of you guys are at this point, but uh, if you're not, I will leave a link down in the description below. Be sure to check out his channel, go check out his one and dones, they're a lot of fun, and uh, have a great week in comics, guys. Thanks for watching this video, and have a good one.